Time for another edition of Presbyter Chat, where your questions are answered through the prism of pre-Nicene Christianity. Now your host, Presbyter Darren Kalama. With all the stories and hype surrounding the treasures held at the Vatican and famous religious artifacts like the Shroud of Turin and the Dead Sea Scrolls, it's interesting to observe the things that aren't given attention by the media. The things barely allowed a fleeting footnote in subscript, buried deep in the dusty appendix of a crumbling academic tome. Beyond contemplating the object itself, it's sometimes more interesting to explore the possible reasons why something so important isn't just ignored, but more accurately, aggressively ignored, studiously and purposefully ignored. And meanwhile, the fanciful nonsense contained in Dan Brown novels is glorified and given the air of respectability, gilded with the trappings of pomp and circumstance, it's fictional storylines brought to life by the biggest movie stars and massive blockbuster Hollywood budgets and marketing campaigns, breathless non-stop promotion and red carpet accolades, the lie exalted, the truth ignored. In today's episode, we take a closer look at one of these ignored wonders. Like the very first Christian Bible of 144 AD, you probably never heard of it. It's the oldest inscription in the world bearing the name of Jesus. A simple thing really to look at it, just Greek letters carved into a stone archway in 318 AD, and dedicating a small Syrian church with the words, to our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Good. Now, you would think it would be worthy of mention, the oldest inscription of Jesus' name in the world. Surely some famous novelist or movie producer would find such a thing of interest, if not give it a story unto itself, at least a mention somewhere. Nope. But why? Probably because it's a huge embarrassment. It's a theological stick in the eye to the establishment, and really there's nothing they can do about it except ignore it and hope nobody pays attention to it. You see, unlike written words and letters that can be edited or translated to in verse or play games with their meaning, you can't play games with words that are carved into a rock. The problem isn't so much the words carved into the rock as it is the church that they're dedicated to. It's a Marcionite church. The Marcionites are their favorite thing to ignore. They aggressively ignore them almost as much as they do the first Christian Bible that served as the bedrock of faith for the Marcionites and the first Christians. You see, the Marcionites knew that the deity portrayed in the Hebrew Bible, they renamed it to the Old Testament. That deity isn't the Christian God we know from the New Testament and the first Christian Bible. It's not the God revealed to us through Christ. And not only did the Mercianites know it, they proved it. Let that sink in. Let the ramifications of such a thing bounce off the bumpers of the theological pinball machine you thought you knew and understood. Yeah, the barbaric deity in that Old Testament has nothing to do with God. In fact, Jesus knew that, and they killed him because of it. The Mercianites also knew it, and that's why the first Christian Bible didn't have an Old Testament. And that, you see, is the problem. Are you starting to understand why this inscription, this Jesus rock, is such a thorny issue? You start talking about the inscription, and the next question is, what church? Whose church? The Marcionites? Who were they? What did they believe? See the problem? The rock not only gives the Marcionites undisputed theological provenance and lineage, it opens up a very large and cumbersome can of worms for the establishment. It's something that Jews and most Christians agree should be left alone. So don't expect any Dan Brown novels or Steven Spielberg movies. Harrison Ford and his entourage won't be swashbuckling their way to this church in Syria anytime soon. The inscription is dated 318 AD, but it's what happened shortly before when the real story begins. May our Father's Holy Spirit find and guide you in these confusing times and lift the veil from your hearts and minds. I'm Darren Kalam, and we'll see you next time on Presbyter Chat.